Welcome back to the Best of 7 Podcast. I'm your host, Brandon Plant from Sense Talk. After a very, very long hiatus, we're here with a very special episode with Senators prospect Angus Cruikshank. For episode number 24, we are so very thrilled to have Angus join the show. Thank you, Angus, for joining once again. You're a beauty. Your name's Electric. And let's get to the interview right now. All right. We are pleased to be joined by one of the most underrated prospects in the Senators organization and by far the prospect with the most electric name, Mr. Angus Cruikshank. Angus, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Brandon. I appreciate it. Well, you know, it's been a whirlwind year for you, I'm sure, you know, starting off the NCAA, now with Belleville. But for the fans that haven't seen you play, how would you describe your game to them? I'd say I'm uh, – I try to model my game after Brendan Gallagher. I mean, I like to get around the net. I love to score goals, um, kind of buzz up and down the ice, be in guys' faces. Um, but, I mean, I, I just try to play uh, as hard as I can every single night. All right. You listen, you know, I'm a sense fan. You're a sense fan. I don't know if many Sens fans are going to be too thrilled with the Brendan Gallagher comparison, but hey, <laughs> it's kind of like Brady Kachuk. If you would like to have him on your team, so we're happy to hear that. Now, I want to bring you to a, what, probably one of the best days of your life, draft day. Everyone has a story on draft day. So what's yours? What was your story on draft day? Oh, man, my story on draft day. Well, I didn't really know kind of going into it. Like there was some talk of getting picked, some talk of not getting picked. I was like, okay, for my mental sake, I'm just going to go with – I'm not – I'm just going to go with the mindset. I'm not getting picked um, just to avoid any sort of disappointment. So brother Bob, you know, in, our, uh, in our house, in our house, we have uh, around the corners of the kitchen. It's like separate from the TV room. And okay. I was making some eggs and I get a, I get a text from my agent out of nowhere. I, I before I even look at the text, like my phone just pinged. And then my brother screams, Hey, I guess you're on the TV. Um, and I was came around the corner. I saw my name was up on the TV and my, uh, agent said it was picked by Ottawa. Um, it was, it was pretty cool just to not only share that moment with my brother, who's, uh, been there for me every step of the way, but also my family and my parents who, I, I, for the, I can't really just thank them enough for, I mean, everything they've done for me, there's nothing that I can do to repay them for what they've done for me. Well, you know what? I think, uh, I think that's awesome. Firstly, you know, getting to be with the family, uh, especially with all the anxiety and nerves of, you know, who knows, right. You never know if you're going to get drafted and nothing's a guarantee. So I think that's awesome. Now I think that the, the true question out of that story is what happened to the eggs after uh, you were drafted? Uh, they were probably the best tasting eggs I ever had. Uh, thankfully I go. didn't, thankfully I didn't burn them, but oh, perfect. Uh... You're, you're a chef and a great <laughs> player. That's awesome. Now I also want to ask you, you know, you've had a young career, but we've, there's been a lot of people on something called sense Twitter, where it's like a mini community on Twitter. And there are a lot of people that call you one of the most underrated prospects in the sense org. So my question for you is what would you say is the highlight of your young career so far, not including draft night, of course. Ooh, probably playing at the university of New Hampshire, to be quite honest with you. It's uh, I mean, I, I can't thank that program enough for the past three years. I've been able to put on that Jersey. I mean, they've gotten me to this point where I am today. And uh, I mean, it's just three of the most influential years of my life. And I've built friendships that I'll, I'll be buddies with those guys for the rest of my life. And I mean, it's college is kind of a unique thing in that regard. Yeah. Um, but it's uh, some of the bonds I have there are very special. Now, before we get back to the conversation about college, because I do have a few questions, I do want to ask a couple of more, uh, what would the word be? fun question so i know tendies are generally more superstitious but players can be too so what does your usual game day routine consist of and do you have any weird superstitions that sense fans should be aware of uh i wouldn't say any like weird superstitions i mean hockey players are creature creatures of habit yeah um so everyone kind of has their own routine but uh for me like i don't know simple things like i, I put like my right side on first, like I'll like my right elbow pad okay. for my left elbow pad sort of thing. I'll tape my stick from toe to heel, not heel to toe. Um, I mean, and uh, I'll always have a back tuck in my jersey. Now, I have to ask, you know, you've been in so many locker rooms, you know, with the in the BCHL, uh, in NCAA, and you're about to enter the AHL. What's the weirdest superstition you've heard? Oh. Hold on, let me let me think for a second. Um, 
I think like in university, there was two guys uh, on my team. Okay. And uh, right before we'd go out on the ice, they would try to tackle each other as hard <laughs> as they can three times right before we go out on the ice for warmups. And like where we walk out at uh, UNH, there's like concrete on both sides. Okay. And like, I'm looking at it like, dude, like one of you guys is going to eat it. And your, your blades are done for the night. <laughs> Did anyone but, end uh, up eating it? No, no, no. Thank, thank goodness. There but go. uh, no, I just thought that one was pretty funny and just one that kind of sticks out. Hey, you know what? Whatever fires up the boys, right? Exactly. Now, speaking of firing up the boys or the fans and everyone in general, Here's a question really for the online Sense fans. Um, there's a movement right now going in the Sense organization, Sense community called the Sense Sickos movement. Uh, the first time you skate at the Canadian Tire Center, you will see behind the penalty box a bunch of weird Sense Sicko um, like meme characters. Have you heard about the Sense Sickos movement, uh, Angus? I've heard a bit. My dad actually talked to me about it oh, the really? other day on the phone. I don't know, he follows this stuff on Twitter more than, more than I do. And he was saying it's, it's almost like a newspaper kind of cartoon figure. I don't know the whole story behind it. Yeah. It's um, you know, the onion, like the satire uh, website. Yeah. Yeah. So basically um, it's from one of their old articles. I don't know the full background, but essentially what the Sin Sickos movement is about is while we're right now, we're in a rebuild. We know we're not contending for a Stanley cup. Um, we're still going to beat the Leafs. We're still going to beat the Habs. And uh, we're going to enjoy winning those games and putting other teams in misery while we continue to assemble an elite uh, prospect pool. So that's kind of what it's like. I wanted to ask you that. That was for the Sense Twitter guys and fans in general, because uh, I don't know if you can hear Brady right now. He's going crazy. He's a big it's Sense Sicko himself. <laughs> so uh, bear with me. But uh, I, did, I did have to ask that for the Sense uh, Twitter people. Now, I know you just got to Ottawa the other day, but if you got in the opportunity to, le- to at least virtually meet or speak with the other uh, members of the Sens organization? Uh, I've been on the phone mainly with uh, obviously the people, the coaches here in Belleville who, yeah. who have been awesome. What's kind of helping with the next steps. I got some uh, systems video with the coaches uh, tomorrow, I believe. Okay. Um, but I've also, like I've talked to management, I've talked to Mr. Dorian and uh, everything's just, uh, it was just super exciting. I mean, talking to the GM is a little overwhelming or it can be. But, uh, I mean, he seems like an awesome guy. Um, obviously, he's doing a great job with the rebuild. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, hopefully I can do my best to be, uh, be a part of it. Well, for sure. You know, I've never had the opportunity to meet Pierre Dorian. And, you know, he seems like just a fun guy to be around. I don't know. Some people are criti- uh, critical of him, but he just seems like a fun guy to be around. He seems like a, a highly energetic guy. And, um, you know, I think that's exactly what a young rebuilding team like Ottawa needs. Now, I do want to ask, has any player, have you gotten the opportunity to virtually speak or meet to any player, uh, primarily on the Belleville Sanders? Uh, I haven't yet. Uh, I mean, obviously they were, they had a couple games this weekend, so I'm yeah. sure they were, they were a little more busy with that. Um, I know a couple of the guys a little bit just through like dev camps and I know Parker Kelly a little bit, uh, he and I have the same power skating coach. Um, but other than that, uh, I mean, it'll be good to meet the guys and hopefully, uh, hopefully make a good impression. Are you fired up for your first season in the AHL? Not only the fact that you get to play pro, but the fact that your first season in the AHL is going to be in a National Hockey League arena, does that fire you up a bit? Oh, yeah. It's cool. I mean, it's what you dream of playing, like growing up as a kid, is to play in those ranks. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Manitoba and Calgary are also playing in their, their I NHL think so, ranks. Yeah. I think so. Um, so, I, I mean, that, that'll that be really cool to be able to experience that. I mean, hopefully one day I can uh, – be a uh, full-time in the NHL playing in those ranks. But uh, I mean, there's a whole lot of work that uh, I got to do to get there though. Now let's move it on now with uh, more of a secret talent part of the interview. Do you have yeah. any secret talents that sense fans should know about? Are you a juggler? Are you a good cook? Is there anything that we should know? Uh, I'm a, I'm not to sound cocky, but I'd say I'm a decent cook. Okay. Um, what's what's the specialty on a Friday night? On a Friday night, I can do a nice uh, pan seared steak with some sweet right. potato, mashed potatoes, and some uh, butter and garlic uh, asparagus is kind of my go-to. All right, well, get- hey, listen, every single team needs a good cook, and it's good to see that we have another great uh, chef coming over into the Sens organization. Now, I have another question, more so about the National Hockey League. You know, I know you're a busy person. Like you and I, we're both in university. We're doing classes online, and I'm sure it's a little more hectic for you because you're a national – you're a National Hockey League prospect. You're playing college hockey. You're now playing pro hockey. 
But of course, I'm sure you're still following along in the National Hockey League as any hockey fan or player would. Is there any storyline right now that interests you in the National Hockey League? Any storyline right now? Uh, I mean, gr- growing up in Vancouver, I'm a, I'm a pretty big Canucks fan. So I'm, uh, I mean, all my buddies back home, like we're kind of, we call them, can, call ourselves Canuckleheads. But um, I mean, we kind of follow those guys pretty in- intently. Um, but also, I mean, I, I follow the Sens, I'd say pretty close. I mean, it's, it's exciting the stuff that uh, Coach Smith and Mr. Dorian have been able to kind of start with the organization. And uh, I mean, everything seems to be looking up for them. Well, yeah, I think um, even, and this brings us back to the Sens Sicko thing, even if we're, you know, in the next few years, once you and a bunch of other prospects hopefully come up, you know, we're going to contend, but for right now, we're not the best team, but we're competitive. Like you just said, we work hard, like you just said. And more importantly, that, that game against Toronto, remember when we were down four or five, one, then we came back to win six to five. That's what the identity of this team always has been and always will be. And that's exactly why I love you as a prospect, because like you said, you're going to be like a Brendan Gallagher. And that's exactly what this team needs with, you know, grit scoring abilities. I love it. Now, I do want to bring it back kind of to NCAA, but not hockey, to basketball, because, you know, New Hampshire's not in the March Madness. They're not in the tournament, but come on. Everyone watches March Madness. Did you make a tourney? Um, not tourney. Did you make a bracket? Who do you have winning and who's going to win the tournament? Yeah, we got a, we have a team bracket um, back in New Hampshire, but uh, I mean, I'm a little biased. Um, I mean, Vancouver is right above uh, Washington and Gonzaga's a uh, team from Washington state. So, I mean, I got, they still don't seem to be a bad pick this year, but uh, most years I got them picked to win. Hey, fair enough. I'm a, I'm a Syracuse fan and uh, we are just coming off a huge dub over uh, San Diego state. So saw that. maybe the, maybe the final matchup will be Syracuse versus uh, Oregon, but uh, we shall see. We shall see. Now the next True. question we'll is see. you played three seasons in, in, in the NCAA with New Hampshire, but none like this past season amidst the global pandemic. What was that whole experience? Like you're, you're studying, you're playing college hockey in the middle of a pandemic. What's that like? It was a little weird. Um, at least to start, once you kind of get into the flow of things, it just becomes second nature to you. But uh, I mean, it was weird. So in hockey, uh, there's like a tentative schedule, but because of the start of the year, some schools had some issues with COVID. I mean, we had an issue with COVID at the start of the year, so we had to miss the first couple first couple weekends. But um, I mean, the cool thing was like you wouldn't know who you're playing until either Sunday or Monday. Oh, really? Yeah. So it was a little wow. interesting in that regard. Um, it's kind of like minor hockey. So how, how does, so how does that change like the game prep? Cause like I know in college and pro you obviously have a couple of days, you see the full schedule coaches can, you know, or GMs can, you know, scout it out before. If you're finding out the opponent a couple of days before, how, how does that affect your, uh, your team and, and their ability to win? Uh, it was a little bit of an adjustment period for like kind of the first couple of times that the first couple of weeks, yeah. but I mean, after that, you just kind of, I mean, obviously the whole process a little bit ex- is more expedited um, mm-hmm. because a couple of days quicker, but uh, I mean, everyone just, everyone gets what they need to get done in, whether it's routines, but everyone's prepared for um, come Friday and Saturday night though. Yeah. Fair enough. You know what? I feel like in college, did you guys have fans in the stands, by the way, New Hampshire, this season at all? Uh, we did not. We were actually about to, if so our first home play for our, sorry, our first playoff game against Maine, was supposed to be at the Whittemore Center okay? because Maine couldn't have home games for some reason, but they somehow found an exemption. But if the game was played in New Hampshire, uh, we would have had uh, students would have been able to come. Damn, that's too bad. Next year, hopefully next year, when hopefully. you're with Belleville, there'll be fans back in Bell Vegas. Uh, the next question is, throughout your NCAA, NCAA career, you've been a prolific scorer in which you were consistently a top five point getter for the New Hampshire Wildcats. So what helped you rapidly develop your offensive game at such a high level, like NCAA division one? I think I honestly got to say the coaching staff at UNH. Uh, I mean, obviously freshman year, any, any freshman, I doesn't matter if you're a first round pick to if you're not picked at all, yeah. or how highly touted you are. Like if you like that first kind of eight or 10 games, like you're, you're learning. It's a yeah. massive jump from high school or junior, wherever you're coming from. And uh, I mean, the biggest thing that the coaches helped me with was the stuff that you'd get away with in junior doesn't work in college. Like, obviously you can translate some skills from there, but this is a whole different game. You're playing against guys that are up to 25 years old. And uh, I mean, it's, there's just things that like everyone's a good player. And I'm, I can imagine it's going to be the same sort of adjustment coming from college to, uh, to Belleville here. 
I think that's a great point. And obviously, you know, I'm a rugby player. I don't play hockey, so I don't, it's a little different, but my question, it's not even a question. It's more of a comment. I feel NCAA gives players like yourself an opportunity to play against bigger men like that. If you play junior hockey, CHL, it's a great league, great leagues. You know, you get Connor McDavid's out there, you know, you got plenty of great players there, but it's less physical. So I think one of the good things about coming out of NCAA is it teaches you how to play a physical game. And that's something you need in pro because it's, it's a huge shock for a lot of players coming out of junior when they go to the AHL because you, you're going from playing against 21 or 22 at the max to 30, 40 year olds who are seasoned veterans. Like at least with you, you've played older men who are going to hit you harder than an 18 year old guy. So that, I think that is definitely an advantage about NCAA that not enough people speak about because it does teach you how to play against tougher, bigger and older competition. I think that's definitely um, a big reason why you see a lot of great talent can come out of the NCAA. Now, although you knew it was likely happening, especially with your great seasons with the Wildcats, what did it feel like to sign the entry level deal with the Ottawa Sanders? I'm sure onions were cut in the Crookshank household. Yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty special. Yeah. I mean, you kind of, kind of dream as a kid, like, you know, at least for me growing up watching like kind of like mid two thousands, the Canucks versus the flames like that, like on hockey night in Canada, like, yeah, that's what you grow up watching. It's what you want to be. And uh, I mean, obviously like it's, it's a dream come true to be honest with you. I mean, I know I got a whole lot to work, lot to work on and I got a lot of work to do, but uh, I mean, it's a good first step for sure. And I can't wait to get, uh, get after it. Now I know you said you spoke to uh, Bevel, Bevel Sanders head coach, Troy Mann. So I do want to ask about that conversation. You can obviously say as much as you can. Don't give too many details away. But if you have, which you have, do you have any idea what your role with the team is going to be moving forward? Have you spoken about any lines, any potential scenarios, the role, et cetera? No, not really. It was more just kind of him calling me, just saying, hi, it's awesome to meet you. Excited to have you. All that sort of stuff. And um, that they're going to kind of be in contact with me as because uh, they were obviously prepping for the games against the Marlies. Yeah. Um, kind of within the next few days to go over some team systems, but uh, nothing in particular about line combos or anything like that. I mean, at the end of the day, um, I'm going to have to work for what's given to me. Um, yeah. It's not going to be given to me outright. And I fully embrace that. And I wouldn't want it any other way, but uh, I mean, I can't, uh, can't wait to get to work and start my pro career. Now, before I wrap it up with a final question and a few fan questions, you did say um, before we begin this interview uh, that you drove into Ottawa, which is very far drive. Did you appreciate the Canadian forestry? I know driving into Ottawa, all you see is forests. There's nothing really around Ottawa except uh, trees. So what was that drive like? And did you get to see anything cool in Ottawa before you started your quarantine? Yeah, it was uh, it was actually a pretty uh, pretty beautiful drive. It was a little cr- cloudy going uh, going throughout Vermont and then up through Montreal. But once I kind of crossed in the Ontario border, it was uh, it was it reminded me of uh, like it just looked like Canada. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and then yeah. it was uh, I mean not that like not that New Hampshire was a, wasn't beautiful. I loved it there. I mean mm-hmm. it reminded me of home a lot. But uh, I don't know. I just kept getting like vibes like kids playing on on the pond. Yeah and that sort of stuff driving through Ottawa and uh, sorry, through Ontario and then to Ottawa. But uh, I don't know. I just thought that was the coolest thing. Now, hundred well, percent, you know, obviously for people like me, you know, we live here, we take that for granted, but I'm sure, especially, you know, coming from somebody like yourself from BC, moving to the States and then come back to Canada, you can just, it's, it's a different both, you know, it's just a different vibe. I, I agree with that. Now I do want to ask what's the impression of the senator's organization um, the city of Ottawa amongst NHL prospects and NCAA players. Have you spoken to anyone? Did they really tell you anything about what to expect in the organization and in the city? Uh, no, not really. Um, I mean, I talked, uh, I talked a little bit with Johnny Psychonic after I'd, I'd signed. I mean, he's a, he's a good friend of mine. He, he and I played at world junior a back in juniors um, just kind of congratulating me, but there was no one's really kind of talked to me about what to, Okay. expect obviously i've been to the city a few times just from development camp and i love the city but uh with regards to the organization um i mean i'm pretty wide-eyed but uh I, I wouldn't want it any other way now i'm gonna ask you one final question before we get to the fan questions because you did say you've been to the city a few times which means i have to ask this question ottawa is seen as the shawarma capital of canada have you eaten ottawa shawarma i have not but i will That's definitely put that mistake. on my list i will definitely put that on the list 
You got to put that on the list. That's for sure. Now let's get to a, a few a fan questions. Then I'm going to let you go. Cause you're a busy guy. You got a lot of things to do, but a uh, couple questions here. And um, here we go. So the first question comes in here from Michael Czar. He asks, what do you think is a reasonable goal for yourself uh, within the next two years? Within the next two years, say playing in the NHL. I mean, that's I'm gonna, better. I, I'm going to work my absolute bag off to, to achieve that goal. And if it happens, awesome. If it doesn't, that, that doesn't change my mindset at all. I mean, that's what uh, I, I hope the management has brought me in for is to play in the NHL. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to work like hell to, to do that. Now, actually, I have my own fan question, I guess, because I'm going to okay. step away from the interviewee position and become a fan for a sec. The Belleville Sander jerseys, the Ottawa Sander jerseys, I think they're the best duo for jerseys in the NHL and AHL and the whole um, National Hockey League. What, do you, what are your impressions on the Belleville jerseys and, of course, Ottawa Sander jerseys? Unbelievable. I think they're so clean. It's so dirty. Uh, I, I, I think the Ottawa jerseys that they went back to the old logo is so sick. I think it, it could, throws me back to when like Spezza and Alfredson and Heatley were tearing it up. Yeah. Um, and the Belleville, Belleville jerseys are sick as well with the, the big massive B. I think it looks unbelievable. Yeah, I, I, no matter who is out there or what, even if we're winning or losing, the good thing is if you're a member of the Ottawa Sanders organization, you're going to look good out there. Now, exactly. the next question comes in from friend of the show, Trevor Shackles. Uh, he asks, what is it like having the best name in the organization? <laughs> well, uh, I appreciate that. Thank you. But uh, I, don't know, I, I mean, I, I, it's funny. I, I always got heat when I was younger for it. But uh, I mean, looking on it now, I'd way rather have a, a unique name versus, uh, versus a standard name, I guess. I mean, I, I personally love it. Hey, I feel you, man. Listen, my last name is Plant. Uh, I got a lot of plant jokes growing up in oh, elementary, yeah. so I feel you. But um, doesn't matter. It's what you make of the name, not what the name is itself. Now, the final question comes in from Taylor Maxine. They ask, what is the hair care routine for yourself? This is probably the most requested question I've been asked to ask you. So I have to ask, what is your hair routine? Hair routine? Uh, honestly, like not uh, nothing too extensive. Uh, like just a little... I mean, after the shower, I'll just put a comb through it, let it sit for a couple minutes. And then I don't know if I'm really feeling fancy, I'll put a little bit of gel in it. And uh, honestly, uh, it's, it's nothing too crazy, but I mean, if any sort of advice I could give is just uh, invest in a good comb. It makes all the difference in the world. You know what? Thank you. That's the perfect way to leave it off. Good advice to Sense fans. Angus Crookshank, we're going to have to have you on again sometime soon. Thank you so much for joining. Good luck with the Belleville Sanders this season. And um, hopefully, again, we'll have you on. And more importantly, hopefully soon, we'll see you in uh, an Ottawa Sanders 2D jersey. Angus, thank you so much for joining us once again. No, thank you for having me. I can't wait to be back on the show. Thanks again, Angus, for joining the show. It was an absolute pleasure. We've been speaking for a week, and I'm fired up that we got this done. So thank you once again, Angus, for joining the show. We'll have to have you on again soon. We look forward to seeing you grow and develop as a person and as a hockey player throughout your next chapter in your life with the Sanders organization we're fired up to have you on the team in the organization not only because you're a good player but your name is by far the most electric name we've had in this organization's history now besides that we'll see you in the next episode with friend of the show host of internal budget and writer for silver seven cents brandon mackie we look forward to having that one out for you very soon but besides that thank you for watching be sure to follow us on twitter at since talk underscore to follow the podcast account at since talk podcast that's on instagram facebook and of course twitter and then most importantly all episodes can be found on five major platforms the first platform youtube.com slash sense talk all episodes of the best seven podcasts will be uploaded there if you want to listen to the audio portion of these interview slash podcast episodes you can do so on spotify apple podcasts soundcloud google play and frankly really anywhere else you get your podcasts it will be there but besides that thank you all for watching we'll see you very soon with a special episode with brandon mackie this was a great episode and we look forward to seeing you next time thank you all for watching see you guys soon